Hey, it's John and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. We have a whole bunch of equipment out here to be put on camera because we're talking about clothes transferred. We put up a video earlier this year talking about how to not introduce oxygen to your New England IPAs. And we talked about all these methods and we just talked about general best practices of how to uh, keep oxidation at a, at a minimum, if not try to reduce it entirely. And one of the big things was closed transfers. Trying to transfer your beer from one vessel to another, especially if you're a kegger, and we'll talk about how kegging is probably the only way to actually have an excellent version of New England IPA. But uh, I think the big thing is, how do you transfer your beer from one vessel to another without introducing oxygen to that transfer? And here we have multiple ways in which you can you too, at home, can transfer your beer from one vessel to another in a closed transfer method. Now, uh, Michael, <laughs> let's talk about this one first. This is a uh, a plastic carboy yes. with a with a with a cap on it. Yep. What, what kind of what's the name of this cap? Orange cap. An orange. It's an orange. Actually, cap. if you go online, it, they're called orange caps. Okay. Um, so so I figured. We'll start there. Most people, most intermediate level brewers are fermenting in a carboy of some yep. sort, right? Yep. And so this just happens to be a plastic one, but this applies to glass or whatever, brick carboys, whatever else you can find out there. Don't say that. Okay. People, don't. they're going to try to buy a brick carboy. They, they don't, it's glass or plastic. So, for, so, closed transfer has to start with, you have to be racking into a completely CO2, CO2 purged vessel. And so, in the front, I've got two kegs with a jumper. And what, what, what I normally do, and what you've probably heard a lot of people do, you fill the keg that's gonna receive the beer all the way up with star sand, with sanitizer, or if it's Santa, you can get away with just water if you're comfortable with that, all the way to the top, put the lid on, then apply gas to it and push all that out. And th by doing so, there's no void volume of O2 or air. When, as you push all that sanitizer out into another keg using a jumper, you take the lid off of the receiving keg or crack the, the, the pressure release valve, it'll flow using CO2 pressure, and now you've got a keg full of CO2. Okay. So now you've fermented in a carboy, you've got a typical setup here where you're gonna rack out with a racking cane. Normally there'd be some tubing on there, right? And so the tubing would then go into your receiving vessel, but if you wanna have a truly closed system, you wanna go from the top of the racking cane with something like this, which is the tubing to go on the, the racking cane, to a beverage out fitting, and you're gonna put this on the beverage out post, and you can then crack the PRV valve. And what I've done with minimal success for minimal amount of equipment is uh, you can, that extra little arm that's sticking out of the orange cap, you can actually blow into that to, <laughs> to get the siphon to start, to okay. get it, the, right? You blow yeah. hard enough that it comes up, and it starts to flow, and you're relying on the headspace of CO2 to not mix a terrible amount with any O2 coming into the top, or that's the, the real poor man's way of doing it. More beer actually used to sell a little HEPA filter with a piece of tubing that's that true. would go on there. You could blow into that in case there's any bacteria stuff in your mouth, you're not putting that in the beer. So that's like the real low budget way to be semi-closed. It's not really super closed because you're letting air in there. Or you can take a piece of that half inch this is high temp silicone tubing that a lot of us use for uh, brew stand systems with pumps and hot liquids. That just happens to fit over the end, that piece. That. And you can hook the other piece up to your CO2 regulator and have and use a little bit of CO2 to start the push rather than uh, blowing yourself. But more importantly, what that does is it yeah. is preventing O2 from going into the beer. So that's, so this, that piece of equipment or that tubing, this. Yep would go on to yep. this cane, huh? Yep, like that, that goes onto that cane. Like that. And, and then it's that good, will go yeah. onto the in post of, of this. Of the, of the keg. So that's, that's a carboy to keg transfer okay. being relatively closed, nice. using a CO2 tank to push. Okay. Okay. So now we'll scale up a little bit. So this is an SS Brewtech brew bucket, okay? And in this system, it's the same idea, but I, so that IPA we tasted a couple of videos ago, I did a closed transfer of that IPA because of hop characteristics. I don't want to lose that due to O2. What I did with that one is the same deal as I used that tubing. This one has an out, out uh, spigot here yep. to the beverage connector, 
And then, then what I did is I attached a stopper with tubing to a gas out, uh, in connector and put that on the keg there. And once you open up the valve, the, the valve, the beer starts to flow into the keg and it's displacing the CO2 back to the top of this. Oh, wow. So the cool thing about that methodology, by using a, uh, a sort of like this cycle of the, um, the, the trapped CO2 going in here, is that um, you don't have to disconnect your CO2 tank from your kegerator system, right? So you can, uh, you're gonna purge this anyway, and then now it's full of CO2, and you can just displace the CO2 back to the top of the thing. What some people do with this same type of setup is rather than have this fitting, during the last couple days of fermentation, you can take like a mylar balloon. People attach a mylar balloon to this and the CO2 coming out fills the balloon. Wow. And then when you draw out, you're sucking that CO2 back in so there's no O2. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's a really ingenious, <laughs> really low budget way of doing it. Um, but I don't, um, I'm not interested in playing around with those balloons, okay. so. Yeah, who is? Um, so in this case, when you're putting that yep. on top of here, you're putting this yep. on here, and that yes. goes into your keg. And then once you, you wanna make sure there's no pressure in the thing, because it, once you connect it, it's gonna to wanna to push CO2. Shoot, yeah. So you wanna connect the top first, and mess. pressurize it that way, and then you open up that valve, and it'll start Got to it. flow. Interesting, okay. And All right, and I have, and I have, uh, uh, some video clips should have been running already yes. about that happening, some up close shots yes. of that. And I'll get some up close pictures or something of each one of these little pieces of equipment. Okay. So what if you're still a low budget brewer and maybe nobody in your house brought you any nice Christmas presents. <laughs> and so you, you're still a, a uh, bucket fermenter, which is there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the best way to do it is to mimic this system and use your bottling bucket instead, your old bottling bucket. Mm -hmm. Use the spigot on the bottling bucket just like you would here. You might want to sit it back from the spigot a little bit for a couple days just to get some of it away from the, the, um, the inlet of the spigot so you don't pull a lot of sludge. But it just so happens, if I can have that silicone tubing, the big thick one, it just so happens, and this is also good for your blow-off setup, this fits on the post oh, of a three-piece airlock. Yeah. So you can, again, hook this up somehow with a beverage fitting or put this on your CO2 tank. And when I say CO2 tank, because this is not pressure transferring, right? A lot of people ask about pressure transfer. You, you can still achieve closed transfer without going through the lengths of a pressure transfer. Um, when I say add CO2 to the top, you're just putting enough in for makeup pressure so that so that the flow doesn't stop and that could just be two psi yeah because none of these vessels are actually rated to hold much pressure the stainless steel bucket will probably withstand a, a good amount of pressure but the seal will probably start to leak before that happens which wouldn't be a big deal because it would be positive pressure you wouldn't be sucking o2 anyway um, pressure transfers are just a more fancier way of doing this but also doing it with more speed because maybe you'd use like 10 psi especially if you had like a, a conical or something that's really meant to hold pressure mm you can really push a lot of liquid fairly quickly and just be faster. When I did this closed loop with the brew bucket and the keg, it does take a little bit longer to transfer than it does if I'm just racking out uh, in any other way. But it still works um, well. And for a beer like a New England IPA, where you want to really be careful about getting O2, um, it's worth the extra time to do that. So um, this is just half inch high temperature silicone tubing okay uh, and it always fits on one of those posts uh, nice. for an airlock so uh, that's the basics of how i do closed transfers um, like i said i don't um, do it all the time but when i when i'm really being careful about uh, o2 once i discovered this loop set system i thought well that's pretty easy and now i've got dedicated pieces of uh, kit for it uh, i'll probably do it that way more often okay so i think the big question for me is what equipment do I need to buy to accomplish a closed transfer? Yes, yeah, so you're gonna need extra tubing. tubing. Um, like this, for this type of guy, it's a stopper with a, a barb. Just yep. a, you need a way to accept the tubing. If you're, you're gonna do this into kegs, so you, you probably have extra keg fittings around. You might have to look for different adapters that go from like one size tubing to this size tubing or something, right? Tubing. So you gotta be wary of that. 
um, a couple extra gas fittings, but I know that you can buy what's called a jumper set easily for doing the keg purge. Uh, the stainless steel, I have a stainless steel racking cane, but it works with a plastic racking cane. I just like that for cleaning. Um, it's really just a couple extra fittings, and I, I, most home brewers, if you're at the if you're at the point in your homebrewing career where you want to do closed transfers, you probably got enough junk <laughs> around that you can cobble a way to do this. Maybe you can come up with some other creative way to create a loop without having to uh, do it the way I did it. But this is just some ideas on how to do closed but, transfer. Yep, yeah, it certainly it seems like the the, the connectors for um, the actual out and yep. the in for kegs. Yep. Which then brings up another question. Uh, closed transfers for those who still bottle their beers, does this work and can yeah. it work? <laughs> so I think you can, you, you, unfortunately you, you can't be totally closed like you are here okay. because the bottling phase requires um, being open in the bottle. It requires going into a bottling bucket, getting the sugar in there too. Um, but what you could do is if you had an extra lid and you had a CO2 source, even if you got the little CO2 um, so there are these little, um, the little mini tanks that go on there. Yep. You could use some makeup CO2 if you if you put a hole in the lid of your bottling bucket, or, or in, you know where you could jam this in. Use this on your fermenter, but you want to you're going to want to flush that receiving bucket with a CO2 somehow as best as you can. Some people get really creative. You could probably find a way to have this be your blow off into the bucket with a little bit of water, I don't know, just get CO2 in there somehow. So it's not gonna be 100%, but if you're a bottler, that's probably the best bet, but you still gotta deal with beer out of the bucket into a bottle that is not purged. Okay. So and if you wanna purge it, you're gonna to have to get a tank and a regulator and whatever. So at that point, you're sort of at the mercy of being a kegger anyway. But if you don't wanna keg because you don't wanna have a fridge, I think a lot of people, the barrier for kegging isn't necessarily buying a couple of kegs and a tank and a regulator. That's th that's relatively short money. It's having the physical space for the kegerator. So if you just bought a keg or two, so you can do the jumper, you could still bottle into the keg and then use like a beer gun to fill your bottles that way and have the sugar in the keg. I, you could get creative that yeah. way. Okay. And so you could still bottle, but you'd be using keg equipment, not a bottling bucket. Right? Yeah. If you didn't have the space for a refrigerator. But then you'd be just like, well, why don't I just get a fridge? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, yeah. if I have kegs, It sounds like a ridiculous, but I'm just trying to offer a solution. No, no, yeah. I hear you. I yeah. hear you. So I think that the other thing is you definitely need two kegs to do this purging. Yep. And then you just have to get uh, funky or just like th th think through it with extra tubing and then the connectors you need to sort of make sure that your circuit is closed. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because yep. I think that's the big thing that one needs to keep in mind. Like the whole idea of closed is mean like you're not introducing air at any part of the process. You are moving your beer from vessel to vessel using CO2. Yeah. And the, the only other thing with this is like with that IP I made, and I, I, I knew I was going to do it this way anyway, but I, there was no dry hop in the keg. Right? right there's no reopening the fermenter yep. to put dry hops in yep. you're going to have to find some real creative way you're going to have to be really quick about once you have a purge co2 canister if you wanted to dry hop in the keg you'd have to maybe open it drop it in and close <laughs> it and accept that you're going to get some o2 in there bit. right yeah, yeah. And you can still do your closed transfer you're still going to get some yeah air in there if you really want to get the hops in there, which is why I was experimenting with that recipe. Exactly. Thinking downstream, if I wanted to stay completely closed, how would I get more hop aroma into a beer without having to dry hop? So Cool. Well, uh, hopefully this has been helpful. We did show a whole bunch of different ways of doing closed transfers. Hopefully that there's some uh, close-up shots of some of the equipment. But if you have questions about this process, because I certainly did when I was thinking about it, but I mean, like just with just the concept of you're, you're transferring your beer without introducing air. If you keep that in mind and kind of think of different ways of how, like especially if you have a bunch of junk <laughs> that you've accumulated over the years just by your home brewing, you can pretty much figure out how you can purge a keg so that it's only CO2 and then how do you get beer from your fermenter into the keg and using a little bit of CO2 pressure to get it in there. And I think that is really kind of the name of the game. But if you have questions, leave them in the comments below and we'll do our very best to answer those. Somebody will answer them. Somebody will. <laughs> Probably Mike.
All right, so if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We do uh, one of these every week, if not twice a week, but that's uh, coming to a close. <laughs> For John and Mike, brew-suits.com. Brew on. Cheers.